Tea Time with Ken Houston, the son of Oak. Olive, queen of social media. Entertainment. Sports. Social media. Politics. Education. Hello, and here we are with one Oakland. In deep East Oakland. And here we are at the Boxing Association in Oakland, right? East Oakland Boxing Association, yes. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited to have a two very, very young, uh, experienced boxers with us today. But before we um, introduce our guests for today, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the history of this, um, this association that we picked, right? Yes, yeah, Stanley Garcia founded this um, years ago. I was blessed and um, lucky to meet the gentleman. I'm a contractor. Came in, I helped him do the plumbing on this uh, on this uh, this building that the city gave uh, him to give back where he came from, which is East Oakland. Um, he was a, a man that had a lot of spirit. He was a prior Golden Glove, prior Golden Glove. And I'm gonna ask the Beast uh, and God, what does it take? for that courage, for a person to come up out of East Oakland and become Golden Glove. What kind of courage? What kind of, is it? Is it mentally strong, physically fit? And the beast and God is gonna answer those questions for us. And, uh, and also not to mention, Ken, uh, that, you know, me being a female, uh, when we met uh, Dahlia Gomez uh, the other day, it was pretty exciting for me because you hardly hear anything about champions when it comes to female. And one of the reasons that we did pick this, um, this location was not that um, only it has a really great history, but also it's because a female actually is the coach of this, um, this uh, boxing association. Yeah, and, and, and it was very interesting. She's not only a coach, she's a teacher. And I have a, a tough question for her. I want to find out how does she handle the children in the classroom and then switch that over and come to a boxing ring? Say, for instance, a kid acts up in the class. Do you have them to hit the bag? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to ask her that question. And how does she move it over to teach them here? That's a very difficult. She's wearing two hats, and that's going to be a good question I'm going to ask her. And as we promised, as we promised, I am gonna box Ken Houston. I don't watch. Know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and watch this clip, and we'll be right back. Yes. Kids at the East Oakland Boxing Association have seen their share of violence. I got a lot of friends who who, who are in games and in a lot of games. I walk away from. It. I, I ain't gotta be in no game. That's not my thing. You know what I'm saying? Boxing is 18-year-old Daryl's thing since he first came to the gym and met coach and mentor Raul Lagura. He, he comes from a broken home. He just recently left his house like a few months ago and, and um, decided to train really hard. I had nothing to do really, so I started coming down here and boxing. So this, this gave me something to do when I'm not at school or nothing. Former Golden Gloves champ Stanley Garcia started the program because he knows what it's like. He grew up here in East Oakland. There's more murders here. It's just tough. It's, I mean, these kids, it's tough for them. There's always somebody out there in a the hustle. But when kids like Daryl get hooked on boxing, there's no time for trouble. Their hours are spent practicing and building stamina. When I first come in here, I couldn't hit the speed bag. I couldn't hit the, uh, the heavy bags. I couldn't jump rope. I couldn't do none of that. Two weeks later, I was able to do all that. But there's more to this gym than raw physical training. Coach Lagora sees the boys transform. I've seen cases in which they are more uh, confident and have more self-esteem in themselves, and I think that is taking them sort of out of the ghetto, you know. So you take that little step, jab, down to the right. Fighting might seem a strange way to keep kids away from violence, but that is a matter of perspective. Um, I'd rather have them communicate through their fists in a controlled environment than picking up uh, a gun and, and putting lead in each other. A sentiment shared by all. This is Brian Pollack, CNS News, Oakland. And here we are. We're here with the bees. 
Welcome to our show. Welcome, Thank you. Welcome, I appreciate welcome. you guys for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you. We're a little bit worried today. We thought that, you know, he's really big and strong and rough and mean, but he seems like he's really soft. I appreciate right? that. Thank you. <laughs> Calm, and, down. Calm down. Calm down. Yes. And um, <coughs> you just had a fight. I did this past weekend. Mm -hmm. I uh, fought for the state Golden Gloves. Uh, unfortunately, I lost by split decision, but, um, you know, there'll be other fights out there for me to engage in, and I just had to take it as a learning experience. And you know what? Before this before this interview, we were talking, and I said, what do you learn from, because we got to teach our children that you don't always win, but you win. So how do you win when you lose? What experience did you pull from that beast? I think no matter whether you win or lose, you just have to take everything as a positive and take everything as a learning experience. You know, it's like whether you win or lose, you're learning something along the way. You know, whether it's mental or physical, you're pushing your body to these limits, mm. both mentally and physically, right. that you're engaging in doing things that not the average person could do. You know, so in order just to climb into a ring and to be able to engage in a fight with somebody, you're already pushing the lengths that most people aren't willing to do, you know? So you just have to take everything as a learning experience and know that over time, you're just gonna get better. Great, right, great, right, great. right. And, um, you know, what was the age that you decided that, you know, I'm gonna go into boxing, <coughs> or I like boxing? Yeah, what, what triggered that? What yeah. made you say, I wanna box? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I first started engaging and getting actively involved in boxing around the age of 10 years old. Huh. I was that kid that, uh, you know, I'm the youngest of four children. I always had a fend for myself growing right, up, right, you know, right, and right. Um, I also got picked on a lot as a kid. Mm -hmm. As you see, all the time kids are getting bullied and picked on. So I was always that kid that always had to kind of stand up and defend myself. And uh, because I was getting in fights so frequently, my mom actually thought it would be a good idea to, to kind of reflect that energy into something more positive. So at the age of 10 years old, I got into uh, boxing. Good. You know, they say that, that, <coughs> that the youth that come out of mm -hmm. the urban city, the ghetto, are usually the ones that box. They say that. Do you see it that way? I think that it can go both ways. I think why most people might see it like that is because the kids that are raised in the streets, they just have more of a hunger to want to succeed. They have that more uh, aggressive ability to want to be a fighter in general, mm. you know, because it's like whether you look at somebody as a fighter in life or a fighter in the boxing ring, we're fighting to survive, you know, and that's how I think that people might perceive it and take it. I'm going to ask Dahlia this question, too. I'm going to ask you. Um, we have tennis in the schools. We have racing, sports in the schools. <coughs> and they go to the Olympics. Boxing is not in the schools as far as I know. Um, how does, do you feel that that should go into the schools or should it should stay in the, the, the rings where the gyms are? Because people are going to the Olympics, they're getting gold, and silver, bronze medals. Um, should you think that that should go into the state, go into the schools, or stay here in the ring? I think that boxing should definitely be actively involved in schools. I think the only reason that it doesn't is because it might intimidate a lot of people. Right. Because when people look at boxing, it is a style of fighting. Most people don't want to know that their children are fighting, you know, at a young age. But um, I think just like anything, it's all about you know, putting that energy towards something positive and not just thinking that your child's just at school fighting, you right. know, about based on the basics and the fundamentals of what that sport is teaching them. Well, it's also if they, if they learn it the right way, it's also a way of discipline. For sure. You know, if they know the right step from the beginning, right, there's no need to be fights on the street. You know, it teaches uh, kids or people in general a lot of discipline, a lot of respect, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it... I just think that it helps kids a lot or people in general on how to go through, in, you know, situations in life, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you trained, when you were trained, were you trained to harness that energy, harness that? If somebody came, you knew you could take them, right, Beast? You know, you could take me right now, right? <laughs> so if I come up on you, how do you, how do you harness? Because you're a weapon. You're a weapon. That is a weapon. I saw that muscle. <laughs> you know, flex told me, I, I'm going to have her to flex again. You're a weapon. How do you harness that when somebody, say, first I walked up to you, you know you could take me. Yeah. Well, how, do you, how do you harness that, beast? 
as I've gotten older and I've matured, I've looked at it as, in a sense that these people aren't worth me getting in trouble mm. for mm. because inside my mind, mentally, I already know that they're defeated. They just don't know it yet. Mm. You know, and I think that it takes, people always say it takes a bigger person to walk away from a fight. Well, it takes an even bigger person to walk away from a fight when you know what you're capable of doing. Wow. You know what? That's so big. I got <coughs> chills because we need to teach our children that. That's 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 something that um, Dahlia. I want to ask her again. That that how do you teach that in the schools? So that's a discipline that you learn. Yeah, just growing up, you know, you just have to kind of use it, at, you know, in a positive light. You know, you can't just go around the streets beating up everybody that you want to because then you wouldn't be using the the tools that you learned in a positive light. You know, so I think it's just about using everything that you're learning and not taking advantage of the things that you're taught. You're a great role model, I'm going to tell you. The, I appreciate that. Thank you. Everything. You're a great role model. And um, mm -hmm. th how many fights have you been into? I've had eight fights as of right now. Oh, wow. Do you have a one particular one that is really memorable? <coughs> yeah, what, what sticks in your head? Which one? What's that one that you you might have had the jitters mm -hmm. or, or you just was like, what's that fight that when you got in that ring just sticks in your head? What is where? I have to say, you know, all the fights to me are mm -hmm. memorable fights just for the, you know, the point that every fight I'm learning something different about my fighting ability, you know, growing as a fighter to get better. But uh, the fighter that actually gave me the chills and, you know, gave me that mindset was my most recent fight, which mm -hmm. was fighting for the state Golden Gloves. And the reason being was I was fighting on a bigger stage at this level and, um, you know, still today, it was my biggest fight that I've had, you know, uh, competing in front of a bigger crowd, um, having a lot more to lose, a lot more on the line, you know. So it was something that, although I lost by split decision, it was something that definitely was a learning experience, and I'm just going to use to get better. You're going to learn it. You're going to move that to the next fight. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. And uh, let's go watch another clip from, uh, from the Beast, yeah. and we'll be back. Let's do it. I know you, you have another fight coming up, right, uh, I in do Vegas? I, um, I was supposed to fight in Vegas, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to fight in Vegas because I didn't win my last fight. Oh, I see, I see. So what is what is your future plan? What are you uh, So my plan right now is I'm going to have one or two more amateur fights and then uh, take that leap into the professional ranks. And you'll go there, you'll go there. You know, on the discipline, discipline. Um, um, where did you get this discipline from? I see this mild person, but in there you turn into the beast. Where did you get this discipline from? Well, a lot of this discipline I got was from being in the military. I was oh. in the Army for three and a half years. Wow. And uh, the biggest thing with the military that, is just that, having that discipline and having that respect, you know, that you have to show towards other people, your fellow soldiers, you know. So um, I think the same thing with being in the military and being in boxing, they kind of go hand in hand, is you got to have that discipline on knowing when to use things and when not to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, how do you want, how do you want uh, followers to follow you? Social media? Do you have a website? Or? Um, yeah, um, I'm on Facebook under Blake McKernan, and then I'm also on Instagram at uh, BlakeTheBeastMcKernan01. Um, and then also they could uh, research me or find information out on my manager's webpage, which is called SojiEntertainment.com. Sojai? Sojai so -Jai Entertainment. That's right, that's right. And we're going we're gonna to write that information on the bottom of the page. And you could also email us at the Son of Oakland. Right. right, right. <laughs> and we'll get you the information that you need. 
And um, let's see, um, is there, is there uh, one of the things that I always wonder, is there an age <coughs> that you, that boxing stops and then they go into coaching or is it just, how does that work? I think that not everybody that actively gets involved in boxing wants to start coaching. Um, but for those that decide to want to take that route, I don't necessarily think that there's an age because, you know, age is just a number. I think it's all, all about mostly about health, you know, about what type of health you're in at a particular age. So for, for certain fighters, you know, that take very good care of their bodies at an early age as they get older, they might tend to fight, you know, a little bit later past, you know, what most people have. So I think it all just depends on how well you take care of your body. Right. Do you plan to coach later down in life? Um, you know, as of right now, it's definitely an option. But because of where I'm at in my career, I'm just really focused on Good. getting my name out there and focusing on my career right now. But, you know, anything can happen when I'm done fighting, you know, whenever that time comes and I have to throw in the gloves and I can't fight no more. Um, I think to be able to stay in a ring to be able to coach younger kids would be an honor. But um, we're in East Oakland, deep East Oakland. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to be your last time, you know, to the East Oakland Boxing Association. Come here and mentor. I mean, show them what – let me say this. They go them chills again. <laughs> if, if, if I had someone like you as this child is going into the restroom, come that I can touch because I'm from here. Mm -hmm. This was the killing zone. We're going to do a clip about Stanley talking about that. If I could touch you as a youth, that's life-changing. For sure. That's life changing because they can relate to you and they can touch you and you become real. You become their superhero because you're a superhero. That's what you are. So we're going to see you. You're gonna, they're going to run in here and I want you to show them a couple of things, you know, later in the clip because um, we need you to come back. We always leave Oakland and never come back. Not always. But when you come, embrace the East Oakland Boxing Association. Embrace Dally, embrace these children because you are a superhero to them. I appreciate that, yes. and I would be honored to come back. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, any message for a youngster that would like to start going towards <coughs> boxing or something to to uh, inspire them to, to come and um, join boxing? Uh, the only message that I would give to young children mm -hmm. or to children you know, in general wanting to come into boxing is just to find that desire or reason of what you feel is what drives you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never let anybody try to stomp on your dreams or to ever try to sell you shortcomings because, you know, we're all capable of doing whatever we want to in life. Mm -hmm. So many kids always have these dreams of wanting to be a professional athlete, but at an early age, so many teachers or other people that they're raised around always tell them that those dreams and they're out of arm's reach, but nothing's out of arm's reach. It's like any of us are able to do whatever we put our minds to. It's just being able to have that drive and that, that desire to win and want to succeed. That's great. That's great inspiration. So we want to thank you for coming to the East Oakland Boxing Association. It was a pleasure to meet you. I saw you online. I watched you. We're going to follow you. We're going to support you to the fullest. Um, and, and, and in closing, what inspired you as a youth? What was who and what made you go like, and just gave you that courage to keep moving? Uh, kept me moving into fighting. Fighting, good, fighting. You know, growing up, you know, I had, a, I had a rough childhood, and I just, boxing was a way when I started at an early age to keep me out of the streets and keep me out of trouble. Keep you me know, busy. I, for sure, you know, it's like everybody knows that if you have too much time on your hands, you're going to start to put that time into negative things and things that aren't going to positive, you know, be positive for your life. So for me, Always being, you know, in the gym weightlifting or being in a boxing gym training was a way for me to escape that other reality to mm. keep a positive light in my life. Great, right, great, great. Right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for being on our show. I appreciate it. the East Oakland Boxing Association with the Beast.